Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla and I've come again with another interesting topic. And this time the topic is product and process validation. You know, it's a series going on of eight episodes, wherein the first episode was with respect to the overall product and process development process. The second one was with specifically to the planning phase. The third one was with respect to the product design phase. The fourth one was with respect to the process design phase. The fifth one, this one, is with respect to product and process validation. The next one will be with respect to the assessment, getting feedback and taking corrective action. The next one after that will be with respect to engineering change not EC and process and what we can do with respect to that. And the last one will be with respect to what are the possible challenges that industry is facing with respect to the new product development process and what can be the possible measures. So in this particular video, I'm going to specifically talk about the product and process validation, which is actually the fourth phase of EPQP. Steve Job has very rightly said that it's not only enough to design something to feel and see it, but what's most important is how that design actually works. So that's what is the intent of product and process validation process. With all the inputs that are coming from planning phase, product design and process design phase, how we are going to make the product, what kind of product it is going to be, whether it is going to fulfill the expectation of customer with respect to cost, quality and time. That is the main and the most important thing in this particular phase. So based on all the inputs which are receiving from the third phase, which includes engineering drawing, specification, pre-launch control plan, identification of special characteristics, uh, then floor plan layout, characteristic matrix, uh, and so many other things based on all those inputs, in this particular phase, I have broadly categorized everything into three parts. The first one is with respect to documentation. Second one is with respect to the process validation. And the third one is about the product validation. With respect to documentation, the first and the most important thing is with respect to the production control plan. So in this particular stage, based on the inputs that we captured through prototype control plan as well as the pre-launch control plan. Now we make a control plan which will be as good as a control plan which will be used for the mass production. Here in the sampling plan, inspection frequency and everything will be aligned to the mass production. And the intent is to ensure that we make, we have to make the product as per the product and process characteristics and it should meet the customer requirement. The second output here is with respect to identification of competent manpower and giving training to them. Now it's very pertinent to ensure that when we are doing mass production or say we are almost near to the mass production, the manpower should be properly identified, they should be trained. We have to do a gap analysis in case we find that there is some gap with respect to the competency, we need to give them training and see the effectiveness of that. There are many specific activities like SPC, MSA, calibration and many other activities that are being done with the people. It's very important that people should be competent in that. Then we talk with respect to certain things with respect to process validation. The first very important thing is the trial run. Now in the trial run, the intent is to see that as for the customer requirement, sometimes it is 300 pieces or maybe 8 hours of mass production or it can be any other requirement. Now it's important to see that whether organization is able to produce the product in the same way as it is expected in the mass production or not. Some very important thing that needs to be taken during the production trial run is that the organization must use the same equipments and toolings, the manpower should be same, the work environment should be same and all the processes should be followed exactly in the same way as it needs to be done in the mass production. And why it is important? It's important so that it should not happen that maybe at this particular stage everything seems to be okay but when we are actually going for the mass production there is some problem that is appearing at that time. The second key output with respect to the process validation is with respect to equipment and tooling. Whatever equipments that we have purchased or manufactured and same is with the tooling like molds. Now it's a time to do the trial run to see that whether they are fulfilling the expectation of the customer as well as what all has been set in earlier also. So that is another output at this particular phase. Then the next thing is conducting MS study, measurement system analysis. So as per the fourth edition of AIG manual, 
Foundation have to identify all types of measuring instruments which are specified in the control plan and then they need to see that how much is the error that is coming because of the measurement system. And as per certain guidelines of repeatability and reproducibility, it needs to be ensured that it should be less than 10. If it is more than 10 but less than 20, then we need to take a special approval. But if it is more than 20%, then it's not permitted. And some of the other things which are important in this particular stage is NBC also. Number of distinct categories which should be less than 5. No, equal to 5 or more, sorry. But the next thing after this is SPC study, statistical process study. As for the second manual of AIG or maybe as for the customer requirement, foundation needs to see that whether they are fulfilling all the requirements as for the customer requirement or not. Here the intent is to see that whether process is stable when they are doing a mass production say for 300 pieces or 8 hours and the target with respect to PP and PPK whether are being taken care or not. If not, maybe something needs to be done at this particular stage. The next possible output with respect to the process validation study is with respect to ensuring that whatever special characteristics that we have identified, whether they are properly identified, whether there are proper controls which are being put on that, whatever, uh, say for example, full proofing is required for them or 100% inspection is required, whether all those things are being taken care and implemented during this stage or not, that's another thing that needs to be seen. Then comes product validation. So in product validation, the first thing is with respect to the type test. Here, whatever inputs that have been given by the customer with respect to endurance testing, vibration testing, salt spray testing or any other kind of test that is being given by the customer or agreed, organization needs to do all those tests to see that whether they are complying to the requirement or not. Once the product validation is okay, the next step is to see with respect to the embedded software. Now, in present times in both two-wheelers as well as four-wheelers, there are a lot of software that are being used for different functioning. So it's pertinent to see here that whether they are performing as per the expectation or there is some gap coming with respect to that. So it's very important to take care with respect to the embedded software. Another output here is with respect to the performance of the special characteristics, that whatever special characteristics that we identified whether those characteristics with respect to product are within control or not and if not what action needs to be done at this particular stage so that when the, that particular product is reaching to the customer it fulfills the expectation of the customer. Another important thing is with respect to the validation respect to the packing standard. Now we must have designed a packing standard. Now it's a time to actually put in the product there and to see that how good the packing is, if any specific requirement is there with respect to environment like humidity or temperature, whether that particular packaging can take care or not. So for example, take an example of PCB. Now there will be certain temperature related requirement, humidity requ related requirement that needs to be taken care of and it's also important that till the time that particular package reaches to the customer, the integrity should remain same. And there should not be any problem with respect to handling of the packaging material when it reaches the customer and also. So once everything is okay, then we can finally say that the PPAP production part approval process that activity is completed. And that is at the moment as per the fourth edition of AIG manual. So there are different kind of documentations which are required, which ensures that whatever is the expectation of the customer that is being taken care of. Now during this PPAP stage, it is not only required by the organization to take care about it, but also it is expected that same thing should be done from the supplier also. And it could be in this entire supply chain. So the intent is that not only the customer should be satisfied with the performance of the organization, but organization should also be satisfied that whatever is the product or component or raw material coming from their supplier, it is fulfilling all the requirements. So organization needs to decide that what kind of PPAP they are expecting from the supplier. Like in the case of customer, generally the thumb rule is level 3, but it's a between an agreement between organization and the customer or organization and the supplier to decide that from level 1 to 5, which level is relevant for them and that needs to be implemented. Once the PPAP is completed or that process is completed, the role of top management becomes very, very important. 
the top element needs to ensure that whatever targets that the organization had set internally as well as with the customer with respect to quality, cost and time, whether they have been met or not. In case there is a gap, whether we can improve it or not and what can be done further. Maybe sometimes the management need to provide some resources so that whatever the targets or maybe the expectation that we set with the customer that can be taken care of. So broadly if you see in product and process validation I talked about production control plan, competent manpower, equipment trials, equipment and tooling trials, then the trial of the production where we do the 300 pieces or 8 hours of production, then MSC study, SPC study, packaging standard embedded software, validation of the product, verification of the legal requirements and finally the support of the top management. Well if everything is done in a systematic and effective manner, we we'll talk about some of the benefits to the customer. Obviously, the customer will get their product on time. The quality will be fulfilling as per their expectation. And whatever is the target price that will be taken care of by the organization. That will also improve the relationship between organization and customer. And the morale of the employees who are working on this particular thing that will improve as well as their competence will also improve. If we talk about the real scenario, there are few challenges which are there in the industry. So some of the challenges are that during this PPAP stage, then in the work environment that is being created, sometimes it is quite different from what is there in the mass production. At many times it is being observed that during PPAP stage, the kind of equipment, tooling and the manpower that we are using, it is actually quite different from that we are going to use in the mass production and that creates a lot of problems. And at times it also observed that the competency of the people who are working in the PPA state that is not quite up to the mark and then organization faces a lot of challenge as well as the customer faces a lot of challenge when the product goes to the mass production. Well, so this is all about the product and process validation. The next video will be with respect to the feedback assessment and the corrective action with respect to the PPA stage. Well, in case you are liking this video and you feel that this video is helping you in some way, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and you will regularly get the updates. In case you want to understand a little bit more about this particular video, you can click a below link and you will find a blog there. You will get the information in much more detail. Well, regularly for almost a year, I am getting feedback from you about different aspects, what you like, what you think needs to be improved. So, I'm thankful to you for that and I'll expect that for this video also you'll be sharing your worthy comments. Thank you.